Hello and welcome back to the Old Golden Black for this video of me reacting to my predictions that I made at the beginning of August for the Premier League season. I'll make a very similar video in a couple of weeks' time once the Championship is finished with the playoffs. But it's fair to say that I haven't been looking forward to making this video since the first weekend of the season because I've got a lot of things very, very wrong. But let's get into it straight away with the bottom of the table. I predicted this. So in relegation places, finishing bottom of the table, I think it's going to be Huddersfield Town. Although they have spent a fair bit of money on players like Tom Ince and Mui from Manchester City, which they had last season, I don't think they've got enough depth in their squad to stay in the in the Premier League. I think I can't see them getting more than twenty five points purely because of the depth, the lack of depth that they've got, and the lack. I know for a fact that I wasn't the only person who predicted Huddersfield to go down and to go down badly. However, they really, really did well in the first half of the season with a great couple of results early on and found themselves near the top of the table uh, and also as well coming towards the end of the season the two draws against Manchester City and Chelsea put themselves in a fantastic position to stay up which they did in the end um, only 37 points which in previous seasons would have seen them relegated but this season with the lack of quality in the bottom half of the table was plenty to see them stay up uh, so I got that one very very wrong West Bromwich Albion in the end were the teams who finished bottom of the table and I'd, again nobody predicted that I think at the beginning of the season lots of Albion fans had had themselves nailed on for that sort of top 10 finish that they'd had for quite a few seasons in a row so with the defensive style of play that Tony Pulis had played for such a long time at the Albion they'd once they'd sacked him and brought in Pardew to play this expansive brand of football by all accounts he came in but didn't tell them how to play there were very lots of disorganisation on the pitch, lots of chaos off the field as well and in the boardroom, sacking the chairman and all sorts of stuff going on. It was a real, real bad season for the Albion and they've salvaged a little bit of pride at the end with the few results under Darren Moore, but going down bottom of the table and then appointing Darren Moore, which personally I don't think is the best decision for the Albion. I think they needed a more experienced head to settle the ship now in the Championship because it's a very, very stressful uh, division and tense division and unforgiving division. And I could see a similar thing that happened to the Wolves and has happened to Sunderland. If they don't make the right start to the season next season, they could easily slip through the trapdoor again. So in the next relegation spot, this is what I predicted. In 19th place, I've got Burnley. I think I like Sean Dyche. I like Burnley as a football club. They're a traditional old fan of the Football League. But I think their away form last season is going to, if that continues this season, they're going to be in a massive, massive struggle. <laughs> in fairness, I don't think anybody would have predicted Burnley to finish seventh and get a European spot. However, I think probably a little bit naive of me to put them in a relegation spot. Despite them being awful away from home last season, the first game of the season, away to Chelsea, they went and won. <laughs> Uh, and then since then they've just gone from strength to strength. I pointed out in that video that they'd sold Keane to Everton. However, they, players like James Tarkowski stepped up and has now been recognised as being in the, uh, the reserve for the World Cup squad. But players like Nick Pope as well, nobody would ever heard of a year ago and he stepped up with Tom Heaton being injured. They were fantastic all season. They had a little bit of a blip between Christmas and uh, sort of March time. Had they have won a handful of games in that they could have easily finished in the top four and it really does emphasize how good a job Leicester did a couple of years ago because they did not let the pressure get to them at all that season whereas Burnley I think once they hit top four in November sort of started to panic and get carried away but they've guaranteed European football for next season which is amazing for a club like Burnley and I really do hope that they go from strength to strength and it doesn't affect them when they go into Europe next season. In the real world in 19th place was Stoke City and they just capitulated again similar to the Albion sort of not being used to being in a relegation battle having in the past 10 years, been sort of safely mid-table. They didn't have the nous to be able to get out of those that sort of position at the end of the season. There was also a number of terrible signings in hindsight now from Stoke, players who didn't even play at the club this season but spent an awful lot of money on. The point of Paul Lambert to try and get them out of the situation didn't work at all. I think they won two games under him. Really, really poor uh, appointment and he's now, of course, gone. In 18th place, I predicted this. In 18th place, I've gone for Bournemouth. I really don't like them as a football club. I, 
it's probably out of jealousy, but the fact that a tin pot club like that with no history, no ground, no fans, no atmosphere at the ground, the fact that they are in the Premier League and it seems like Wolves and Leeds and Forest and not is really, really annoying for me. And in the end, Bournemouth finished in a comfortable 12th position on 44 points. Having had a really poor start to the season, they did look as if they could be relegated. Eddie Howe got them out of trouble around about Christmas time and they've gone from strength to strength at the end of the season, winning the last two games, looking pretty strong. Again, despite the size of the club and the everything else, the size of the ground and the support, they're fighting well and well above their um, capabilities and they look like a team who, again, next season should be finishing that sort of position should they make the right acquisitions in the summer. And in the actual 18th place was Swansea City. A real, real poor season for them. Started off poorly. Had a little bit of a resurgence under Carlos Carvajal around about Christmas time or just after. But then the last into the last 10 games of the season just completely capitulating, barely scoring any goals and they dipped into the relegation zone just at the wrong time at the end of the season and another manager who's now gone and another club who I worry for because similar to Sunderland they've just about stayed in the Premier League for the last couple of seasons and now being in that championship mess and having to have to win every every other game whereas I think they used to win in one out of every six or seven games the pressure does build and whoever goes in there has got a big job on to make sure that they just stay in the championship for the time being. So for the top four, in fourth place I went for Arsenal. I thought that Arsene Wenger would be determined to get into that top four place and not really prioritise the Europa League. However, we did see him get into the semi-final of that competition. We've also seen him leave, which I didn't predict. I thought that he would stay for these two years. However, by the sounds of it, he would have stayed, but has been asked kindly to leave now and his reputation leaves a little bit in not tatters but slightly tarnished whereas if he'd have left a couple of years ago with an FA Cup win it would have been a slightly better way to leave but what cost Arsenal this season was their awful away form not picking up a point until the last game of the season away at Huddersfield was a really really poor way to go out for Wenger in the real world, in fourth place was Liverpool, who've had a fantastic season so far. It could be an amazing season had they, if they beat Real Madrid next weekend. But Liverpool, I thought that the Champions League would have a negative impact on their season, whereas in fact I think it's probably enhanced their season. Up until the last couple of games, I think they slipped up quite a few times in the midst of the quarterfinal and semi-finals of the Champions League. I think they've dropped quite a few points against teams that they wouldn't have usually done against Albion and Stoke. Uh, however, they've scored an awful lot of goals with Salah being the top goal scorer in the league and their defence was shored up uh, in the January transfer window by signing Virgil van Dijk. So they really, really deserve to be in the top four and I think, I predict now that they will beat Real Madrid next week. I think they're on their day against any team in the world. Their attacking force is unstoppable. In third place, I predicted Chelsea to finish there. I did predict that they would have a tough season this season. They sort of have an on-off season and having won the title last season, this season was going to be their off season. I didn't predict it to be as bad as it actually was, finishing fifth in real life. Um, but they, again, I did predict the unrest in the dressing room with Conte sort of missing key figures like John Terry in there. Some of the games that they lost, particularly away from home against Watford and Newcastle, really showed the just lack of interest from some of the players. And it's going to take a big shake-up, I think, for Chelsea to compete next season with how far they finished off the title this season. They're going to have to really, really do well next season. In third place in real life were my flops for the season. I thought Tottenham were not going to have a very good season this season. Having to play at Wembley, I thought it was going to have a big impact on their season. Whereas in real life, they've actually adapted quite quickly to playing at Wembley. I think they had a quite a couple of tough games early on there, Chelsea being one of them. But they managed to deal with that pressure and they've performed quite well. I do think that this season coming now will be a tougher one for them, moving back into their ground at White Hart Lane and having to try and keep hold of players like Harry Kane and Deli Alley. They've got to spend money. They've got to keep hold of Pochettino as well, who's been linked with the move to Chelsea. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens in London over the next few months. And finally, two that I got right. I predicted that Manchester United would finish second and Manchester City would win the league. And that's what's actually happened. I did not predict, though, Man City to win the title in such an emphatic way that they did. Um, having only dropped 14 points all season, that's an unbelievable amount of points. They've been a fantastic team to watch. So easy on the eye, so quick passing and amazing football. 
So Manchester United in second place had their best season since Alex Ferguson left in 2013. And had Manchester City not had such an amazing season, they would have probably had a really, really good go at the title. 81 points, not a bad haul at all. Uh, I think they lacked goals in the middle part of the season and the last third. But the beginning of the season, if you remember, they were absolutely unstoppable. They scored an awful amount of goals. Uh, like we've seen a lot of Mourinho teams do in the past, they've blown teams away in the first half of the season and they've been pragmatic in their approach in the middle part, just winning one nils, but they didn't quite get enough of those one nils and two nils to see them over the line there. A highlight of their season would, of course, been stopping Manchester City winning the title against them in that Manchester derby uh, around about Easter time. But they're in a good position now, I think, to build and to have a real title challenge next season, although... Uh, usually Mourinho in the, his third season at the club tends to drop off, but that's because he tends to win the title in the second season there, which he hasn't done this season. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. I don't think they need to add too much to their squad, but it does seem at Manchester United that they've signed a lot of names rather than thinking about a structure of the team and building a, a style and a strategy to be successful in the Premier League. It'll be interesting to see what they add in the summer. And just to finally talk about my dark horses of the season, I predicted that West Ham were going to have a very good season, but they didn't, did they? Unrest at the ground we saw um, a couple of months ago now. They, The signings that I said looked like good signings, like Hernandez and Joe Hart, turned out to be not quite very good. Although the signing of Marco Anatovic turned out to be quite a good signing for them. And I do think that with the right signings and the right new manager with Moyes leaving in the summer, they could, they've got the potential to be a good team. They just have not got the right mix off field, I don't think, particularly at board level. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below of this Premier League season. Next season is going to be an interesting one. I think there's a definite clear two divisions now in within the Premier League. You've got the top six and seven with sort of Everton and Burnley in that section there and then the rest of the team the rest of the teams is a free for all and, and hopefully my team wolves can have a good go at getting into that top 10 and possibly a push for the top six if we get enough good signings in the summer thank you very much for watching don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more general football content which will be coming up over the next few weeks with the world cup coming very excited about that gutted that ruben neves won't be in the squad there'll also be wolves transfer rumors and stuff coming in the next couple of weeks Look out for them. See you. Bye-bye.